All right. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon if you're living outside the uh, Philippines. Welcome to this joint live stream by 9.09er and Kinetics USA. My name is Marlon. I am the 9.09er Quezon City uh, franchisee. All right. So, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this wonderful evening. Hello. Hello to all our viewers right now. We have... 23 people watching this live stream. If you are tuning in, let me know if you're there. Say hi in the comments section. All right. Hello, hello. I hope everybody watching is in good hands right now. Again, I'm very blessed and I think it's a privilege for me to be able to use this platform to share what I know about the IELTS and the TOEFL. And I'm glad that Kinetics was able to allow me to use their platform to connect with a lot of people who are interested in taking English exams like the IELTS and the TOEFL. Again, my name is Marlon. I am the franchisee of the 9.09er Quezon City branch. I also happen to be the head of the TOEFL department of 9.09er IELTS Review Center. I have been teaching for more than seven years now and together with the rest of the 9.09er team, we have helped a lot of Filipinos make their dream of working overseas come true. All right. So we have some people greeting me. Thank you so much. Hello, Miss Jess Akuram. We have Zidnik Royo. I hope I'm not butchering your name. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Hello, everybody. Let me know where you're watching me from. Are you watching me from the Philippines? If so, what part of the Philippines are you from? If you're watching me outside the Philippines, where exactly are you? All right. Well, we have our president tuning in right now, Mr. Irvin Nel Temporal. Good evening, sir. All right. So, obviously, if you've seen the, the title card, as they call it, you know that I'm going to talk about the IELTS and the TOEFL tonight. So, let me just share something with all of you. Should be showing up. All right. So it's going to be a talk uh, between the IELTS and the TOEFL. We're going to discuss these two exams and the major differences between them, how you can effectively prepare for these tests, what are expected from you if you ever decide to take these exams. All right. So let's get started. Oh, by the way, before we get to the meat of the matter, I would like to invite everyone who's watching right now to join TOEFL Study Group Philippines. All right. So it's a TOEFL study group. Again, the name of this Facebook group is TOEFL study group Philippines for Filipinos by Filipinos. In this particular Facebook group, you will learn about the developments regarding the TOEFL exam. There are also free materials that will help you prepare for the test. You can also find other people who are going to take the exam soon so that you can practice together. And lastly, there are plenty of things that you can find in this Facebook group that will definitely make a positive impact to your test preparation. All right. So again, the name of this TOEFL study group is TOEFL study group Philippines. You can find it on Facebook. Just answer the membership questions and the admin, myself included, the administrators will be more than happy to take you in. All right. As I mentioned, I'm the franchisee of the 9.09er Quezon City branch. So I would also like to invite everyone to give our Facebook page a like and a follow. So our Facebook page is www.facebook.com slash Niner Quezon City. I'll be writing it in the comment section so that you can easily find us. Supporting our page will definitely contribute to raising awareness to the existence of our branch in the northern part of Metro Manila. We want to make sure that we're helping all Filipinos prepare for their test. All right. And if you're still not able to get in touch with an employer in the U.S., if you want to become a certified nurse in the United States of America, you can apply using the link that you see on the screen. I will be sharing it on Facebook as well. Pursue your American dream <laughs> and sign up with Kinetics USA. They will help you become a certified nurse in the U.S. 
through the link that I shared via the comment section. And also, again, you can see it on the screen. If you don't have access to your comment section for some strange reason, maybe your mobile device is preventing you from doing so, then just remember the link that you see on the screen. All right. I think most of our viewers are very familiar with the IELTS. Of course, it's perhaps the most popular international standardized English exam in the world. It's widely accepted in all the countries where English is the primary language. It's also actually accepted in countries where English is not even the primary language. And what I mean by that is there are companies that are looking for IELTS certification from healthcare professionals if they want to work in places like Singapore and Germany, which is weird, right? You wouldn't think that places like Singapore and Germany would require you to take the IELTS, but it is what it is. So again, the IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System. I think this is something that has been established for a very long time now, especially by people who have been watching a lot of videos here on the Facebook page of Kinetics. But for the sake of those who are not familiar with the IELTS for the sake of the uninitiated, again, the IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System. You take the IELTS if you want to work, study, or live in a country where English is the primary language. Given the nature of kinetics, a lot of healthcare professionals want to work in the U.S., obviously because of financial reasons. <laughs> the U.S. pays nurses, med techs, and physical therapists uh, a lot of money compared to you know, hospitals and clinics in the Philippines. And if you want to work in the U.S., the U.K., Canada, Australia, New Zealand or Ireland, you have to take the IELTS. If you're a healthcare professional who wants to pursue a career in the countries that you see on the screen, one of your major requirements would be to take an English exam as proof of your proficiency of the language. And typically, the first test that comes to mind would be the IELTS. But what about the TOEFL? So the TOEFL stands for Test of English as a Foreign Language. You see the IBT there that stands for Internet based test. This is possibly the second oldest English exam. In terms of global popularity, the second most popular English exam in the world just behind the IELTS. The TOEFL IBT is familiar or popular rather to people who want to apply for a student visa to the US. But it's also popular among healthcare professionals. In other words, the TOEFL IBT is an alternative to the IELTS. If you have taken the IELTS before and you have not succeeded in getting the scores that you want, or in the event that the IELTS is not available in your location, then the TOEFL IBT is a viable alternative. To register for the TOEFL IBT, you have to do it via the link that you see on the screen. There are test locations around the world, but in the Philippines, the major locations would be in Metro Manila. You have some provinces in the northern Luzon area where you can take the TOEFL IBT. There's Cebu and Davao also as accredited locations for the TOEFL IBT. But to be specific, if you want to take the, the test, uh, you can go to the link that you see on the screen. I'm going to type it also in the comment section for the sake of those who are interested in taking the test, let me just type it there. All right. So I've taken the liberty of typing the, the link for registering for a TOEFL exam. So you can take a test center near you so that you can take the test without having to worry about traveling great distances. Okay, so we have Pascal Varsfeld. Interesting. In my country, they offer TOEFL. Yeah, good. So if they don't offer IELTS in your country, then consider taking the TOEFL instead so that you can still pursue your American dream so that you can become a healthcare professional in the U.S. All right, cool. So just to give you a quick overview of how different these two exams are, I have a table here, you know, if you want to take a screenshot of it, feel free to, to do so. I can normally discuss these things without any visual aid, but 
I think it would serve all our viewers well if we have a visual representation of the main differences between these two exams to help you remember the key features of the IELTS and the key features of the TOEFL. And this will help you make your decision between which of these two tests you will take. So the IELTS is composed of four sections, namely listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Each section, uh, you will be graded from a scale of zero to nine. So nine is the perfect score in the IELTS. So that's why that's the name of our review center, 9.09er, because we produce a lot of people that get perfect scores in the IELTS exam. So for each section, you will be graded from zero to nine with nine being the highest. After that, the examiner will get the average of your scores from all sections and the average of your scores from all four sections will become your overall band score. For the TOEFL IBT, you also have four sections. You have reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Uh, for each section, the lowest score is zero. The highest possible score is 30. Afterwards, examiners will compute your total number of scores from all four sections, and the total score will be your TOEFL overall score. So let's say you got 30 in reading, a perfect score in reading, a perfect score in listening, a perfect score in speaking, a perfect score in writing. That means your total score will be 120. So in the IELTS, the perfect score per section is 9. For the TOEFL, the perfect score per section is 30. For the IELTS, the perfect overall score is 9. For the TOEFL, the perfect overall score is 120. So how long is each of these tests? The IELTS lasts for less than three hours. All right, I'll repeat that. Under three hours to complete the IELTS. We're going to talk about each section in detail later. But just to give you a preview why the test is that long, the listening exam lasts for 30 to 40 minutes. The reading exam lasts for about an hour. And then the writing exam lasts for also an hour. So that's already a total of about two hours in at least 40 minutes or at least 30 minutes. So two hours and 30 minutes at the very least. And then you have the speaking exam, which lasts for 11 to 40 minutes. So that's about two hours and 44 minutes at the very least. So under three hours for the IELTS. What about the, the TOEFL IBT? So the reading test lasts for roughly 28 uh, minutes. The listening exam, uh, roughly uh, 35 minutes. And then the speaking test for about 17 minutes. And then the writing exam for about 30 minutes. Uh, I'll double check that later for the reading and listening. I may have gotten them <laughs> interchanged. I think, but bottom line, we're going to talk about them later in more detail. And to summarize, it only takes less than two hours to complete the TOEFL IBT. So right off the bat, we can tell a very key difference or a big difference between the two would be duration. If you're not in the mood to take a lengthy English exam, then consider taking TOEFL IBT. If you feel like your body can handle the physical challenge of taking an exam for almost three hours, then take the IELTS. So the IELTS is available in two modules. We have the academic module and the general training module. The academic module, you take it if you're planning to apply for professional certification or registration. This is typically the case for nurses, teachers, engineers, doctors, architects, and IT professionals. But for those who are seeking, uh, let's say, permanent residency, if you're going to apply for skilled work visa, for spouse visa, if you're applying for student visa for a program below bachelor's degree, then you will most likely take the general training module. If you will apply for student visa, but you're going to enter a bachelor's degree program or higher, you're going to take the academic module. The IELTS academic module is basically the equivalent of the TOEFL IBT. The TOEFL IBT has no counterpart for the IELTS general training module. 
When it comes to mode of delivery, the IELTS is available in two. We have the paper-delivered version of the exam and the computer-based version of the test. Paper-based means the old-school way. You're going to be given questionnaires and answer sheets. You're going to write your answers using a piece of pencil and the materials provided to you. Computer-based simply means you're going to input your answers using your mouse, using your keyboard. You have a screen there that shows you the questions and how much time you have left. The TOEFL IBT is also available in two modes of delivery. We have paper-based and computer-based. So traditionally, as the name implies, TOEFL IBT, IBT means internet-based test. Traditionally, the TOEFL is a computer-delivered exam. But if I'm not mistaken, I think a year ago or two years ago perhaps, they started offering a paper-based version of the test. The paper-based version of the TOEFL IBT is only available in four countries, namely Colombia, India, Mexico, and the USA at the, at the moment. I think they're trying to explore the possibility of offering the paper-based version of the exam in more countries. But right now, those are the only four countries where you can find a paper-based version of the TOEFL IBT. So if you're living in the Philippines, and majority of our viewers are from the Philippines, unfortunately you won't be able to find a paper-based version of the TOEFL in your location. So that means you have to settle for the computer-based version of the exam. If you're going to take the IELTS in the Philippines, it will cost you, so this should actually be 12,350 pesos. So let me fix that. Let me just update that. We don't want to show any mistakes, all right? <laughs> Sorry about that. I overlooked that part. I just want to fix that for the sake of our viewers. At the beginning of this year, at the beginning of 2023, um, there has been a, uh, an IELTS price hike. Uh, the cost of taking the test in the Philippines has slightly increased. So it's now 12,350 pesos if you're going to take the IELTS in the Philippines. The good news, 9.09er branches have become... Authorized IELTS testing centers. All right. So if you're going to take a test with 9.09er IELTS testing centers that are partnered with the British Council, you will be able to enjoy a 1,000 peso discount on your test, provided that you're taking the computer-delivered version of the IELTS and you scheduled your exam on a weekday. So for those who are living in Metro Manila, we have test centers in in Quezon City, uh, not Quezon City, in Manila and Makati. So, Picampa, Manila and 9.09er Makati are the branches of 9.09er that are authorized IELTS testing centers. We also have other branches outside of Metro Manila that are authorized testing centers. For more details on that, coordinate with our main Facebook page. But what on top of the top of my head, I think we have 9.09er Tugigaral. We have, um, I think, Calamba. And we have a branch in Batangas that are authorized IELTS testing centers as well. Okay. So again, if you take the IELTS with any of our authorized testing centers, you will enjoy a 1,000 peso discount provided that you're taking the test on a weekday and you're going to take the computer-delivered version of the exam. But wait, there's more. <laughs> more goodies from 9.09er. If you take the exam with us, not only do you get a 1,000 peso discount, you will receive free IELTS books. You get to choose between our 9.09er IELTS Writing Guide or 9.09er IELTS Speaking Guide. And you will also get the chance to refund your test fee. Wow! We conduct a monthly raffle draw where we pick one of our test takers who will be able to refund their test fee. Isn't that amazing? But the best part, is probably being able to receive a 500 peso GCash incentive if you take the test with us. So that's four benefits, ladies and gentlemen. A 1,000 peso discount, a free book, you also have the chance to refund your test fee, and you get a cash incentive. Isn't that amazing? So many goodies if you take your IELTS with a 9.09er branch. What about the TOEFL IBT? Similar to the IELTS, the TOEFL IBT just got a little bit expensive. Just a few months ago, it was priced at 225 US dollars. Now it costs 300 
US dollars. All right. So it's it's getting a little bit costlier. <laughs> the the I think the difficult thing for people who are going to take the exam outside the US is the dollar exchange rate. For example, in the Philippines, if the peso becomes weaker against the dollar, then the test becomes way more expensive. Whereas with the IELTS, the the price is fixed in the Philippine currency. So while the TOEFL IBT is a shorter exam, and I think that's favorable to a lot of people, when it comes to price, we have a clear winner here, and that's the IELTS. In terms of validity, both tests are valid for two years. Or in other words, your test results from both exams are valid for two years. Let's say you still don't have an employer, you don't know what to do with your test results. That's plenty of time to figure out what to do with your results. How long will it take before you find out your test results? So for the paper-based IELTS, it will take 13 days from your test date before the results are available online. A paper copy of your result will be mailed 13 days after your test date. For the computer-based version of the IELTS, it will take three to five days from test date before your results can be viewed online, while the paper copy of your test result, also known as, also known as TRF, the test report form, it will be mailed three to five days after your test date. So between the two, which do you think is better? I think it's the computer-based exam. I would also like to add that at our authorized 9.09er IELTS testing centers, computer-based exams are offered every day. Case in point, the PCAMPA branch. Every day, we offer computer-delivered exams. But obviously, if you're not comfortable typing your essay through a computer, if you're not comfortable using your keyboard for that purpose, if you experience screen fatigue, fatigue quickly, then obviously paper-based has to be your option right there. You have to take the test the old-fashioned way. So you're giving yourself the best chance of getting your desired outcomes. What about the TOEFL IBT? You can view your test results online four to eight days after your test date. And if you're requested for a paper copy of your result, it will be mailed 11 days after your test date. If you're not happy with your test results, the IELTS and the TOEFL IBT gives you a chance to ask the examiners to recheck your work or to review your performance. So in the IELTS, if you want to apply for inquiry on results, so that's basically score review, it starts at 5,250 pesos. It becomes a little bit more expensive depending on the type of test that you took. So for regular IELTS, it's 5,250 pesos. And the regular IELTS is what US-bound healthcare professionals take. If you will take UKVI, which is the exam that UK-bound healthcare professionals take, the, the score review becomes a little bit expensive. What about TOEFL IBT? It will set you back by $80 per section. When it comes to score review at Niner, we only recommend that you apply for score review for your speaking and writing exam. It has not yet happened. In, in our recollection, it has not yet happened where scores have changed in the listening and reading sections. So whatever result you get in your listening and reading exam, that's pretty much set in stone. There's no changing that anymore. But for speaking and writing, we have heard a lot of stories where scores have changed. In the case of the IELTS, there are two possible scenarios. If you apply for score review, your speaking or writing score may stay the same or it may go up. So those are the two possible scenarios. If your score doesn't change, IELTS gets to keep your money. <laughs> but if your score changes, they will give your money back with some deductions with regard to processing fee. What about the TOEFL IBT? For the TOEFL IBT, there are three possible scenarios when you apply for score review. Your score might go down, it could stay the same, or it can go up. For IELTS, if you're confident with your speaking and writing answers, then by all means, apply for score review or inquiry on results. But for the TOEFL IBT, we don't recommend 
score review or remarking because the success rate is very low. It's very low. So statistically, st- statistically speaking, you're better off retaking the entire test. All right. So let's have a head-to-head comparison between the sections of these exams. The way that the IELTS works is you start with listening, followed by reading, and then writing. The speaking exam would be conducted on a different day if you registered for a paper-based exam. So let's say you registered for a test on September 30. It's possible that your speaking exam might be held on September 27, 28, or 29, maybe on October 1 or 2. And then your written exams, listening, reading, and writing, you will take them on September 30, starting with listening, followed by reading and writing consecutively. No breaks in between. If you register for a computer-based IELTS, you get to pick the schedule of your speaking exam. You can take all four sections in one day, or you can have the speaking test on a different day and the written exams on a separate day. What about TOEFL IBT? For TOEFL IBT, you will deal with all four sections in one day. You start with reading. So unlike IELTS where you start with listening, with TOEFL you start with reading, followed by listening, and then you have speaking, and then you have writing. So let's get into the details. Okay, For the IELTS reading section, you're going to answer 40 questions in 60 minutes, and you will get your answers from three passages. We're going to compare the IELTS academic module with the TOEFL IBT because, again, these are the two that have the same features, they have the same purpose, they're designed in a similar way. Again, the TOEFL IBT does not have a counterpart for the IELTS general training module. So again, for the IELTS, you're you're given one hour to answer 40 questions in the reading section, and you're going to get your answers from three passages. These passages are taken from newspapers, textbooks, and academic materials because, as I've mentioned earlier, the IELTS academic module is used as proof of English proficiency by people who are applying for student visa. Therefore, the the materials that you will see in the IELTS reading section resemble, or if not, were taken from college textbooks or reading materials that you would encounter at the university level. Most of the questions in the IELTS reading section are short answer questions. What do I mean by that? You will pick or select a specific word from passages in order to answer questions. There are some multiple questions in the IELTS, but for the most part, you will deal with short answer questions. What about the TOEFL IBT reading section? Originally, the TOEFL IBT exam, the TOEFL IBT was lengthy, and it's because of what they called unscored questions. Before, ETS, the maker of the TOEFL IBT, had the habit of including unscored questions in the exam. The purpose of the unscored questions is to maintain the level of difficulty across all versions of the TOEFL. The problem with unscored questions, there's no way of identifying them. Therefore, all questions must be treated as if they're important, even though some of them aren't actually worth anything. The the unscored questions used to be placed in either the reading or the listening section, but never both. So in the event that the unscored question was placed in your reading exam, it will not be found in the listening exam and vice versa. Typically, if your reading test lasts longer than usual, the unscored questions are there. If your listening exam lasts longer than usual, the unscored questions are there. But in July... 2023 ETS implemented a change to the TOEFL IBT. It removed the unscored questions. And that's why the TOEFL IBT is way shorter than it used to be. So for the reading section, okay, so like I said, I think I got it mixed up earlier. So the the TOEFL reading section of the TOEFL, so the TOEFL reading section is way shorter than the IELTS reading section. It's just 35 minutes compared to 60 minutes for the IELTS. All right, so that's super short. And you're just going to read two passages. And there are 20 questions equally distributed between these two passages. So that means 10 questions for one passage and the other 10 
they're dedicated to the second passage. All questions are multiple choice. So you don't have to worry about finding specific words. You just have to pick the right answer. But in my experience of teaching the TOEFL and the IELTS, a lot of people complain about the TOEFL's reading exam. A lot of individuals find it way more difficult than the IELTS. Why is that? If you notice, the TOEFL only focuses on academic passages. Therefore, the vocabulary you will encounter here is more challenging. Whereas with the IELTS, you get some breathing room because typically the first passage is probably taken from a newspaper or a magazine, which is easier to understand and contains less challenging vocabulary. If reading is your weakness, then take the IELTS over the TOEFL. All right. So this is just based on my experience as someone who took both exams. This is based on feedback that I get from students. Ultimately, the decision is yours to me. Now, what about the listening section? So for the IELTS, if you're taking the computer-based exam, you're given 30 minutes to complete the test for listening. For the paper-based version of the test, you're given 40 minutes. And some of you are probably wondering, how come the paper-based version of the IELTS is a lot longer than the computer-based version of the listening test? In the computer-based version of listening, you get to answer questions directly through a computer. Whereas with the paper-based version, you're allowed to write answers on the questionnaire, but you have to transfer them eventually on the answer sheet because the examiners will check the answer sheet, not the questionnaire. So basically, you're given 10 more minutes in the paper-based version of the IELTS for transferring answers. But you don't need to transfer answers in the computer-based version of the exam. That's why it's shorter. So take that into consideration as well when deciding on what exam to take. In the IELTS listening section, you will hear two conversations and two monologues. The first recording is between two people. They're talking about a topic that you would encounter in everyday or social settings. The second recording, you have one person speaking, and this person is discussing a topic that you would encounter in social settings. The third recording, you have two or more people discussing topics that you would encounter in an academic setting. So this could be about homework, projects, test preparation, uh, preparation, or swapping courses. And then the final recording, you have one speaker uh, delivering a talk, conducting a sem seminar, or discussing an academic concept. If you go to the IELTS website, it says there that speakers in the listening exam uh, feature a wide range of accents. But based on my experience, based on the feedback of our students, the IELTS is dominated by people with a British accent. So how is that different from the American accent? The British accent, speakers with that accent typically have a glottal stop. So the T's and R's are not that pronounced. And they also use a different set of words. For example, elevators, that's what Americans would say. But people in the UK, they would say, lift. Americans call the sport soccer, but people in the United Kingdom, they call it football. Um, Americans would say French fries. Brits would say chips. So you have to also remember that if you're going to take the IELTS exam, especially if you're from the Philippines, where our education system is designed after the one in the US, the words that we use here may have a different meaning in the IELTS exam. And similar to the IELTS reading test, a lot of the questions are short answer. What about the TOEFL IBT listening section? It's dominated by people with an American accent. And people in the Philippines have no problem understanding people with an American accent because we grew up with, we grew up with Disney movies, Marvel movies. So we have no problem understanding people that speak like that. Whereas with the IELTS, we don't have a lot of experience dealing with people with a British accent. And that's where some people struggle with. All right. So the TOEFL IBT listening section is a little bit longer than the IELTS listening section. It's 36 minutes. 
of course, in the IELTS for paper-based exam, you have 10 minutes for transferring answers, but you can pretty much do whatever you want during that time. You can rest. Whereas with the TOEFL IBT, it's 36 minutes of answering questions. So you will hear three lectures and two conversations. And you have a total of 20 questions to answer. You will get the answers from the recordings provided. There will be six questions per lecture and five questions per conversation. All the questions are multiple choice. You have you don't have to identify or pick out a specific word from, from the recordings to respond to questions. All you have to do is just pick the right answer. One thing that is not covered by the presentation here is that with the IELTS, you're able to see the questions and hear the recordings at the same time. Whereas with the TOEFL IBT, you will hear the recordings first before you can see the questions. And that can be challenging for some, especially those who are not good at note taking. If you prefer to see questions while hearing recordings, take the IELTS. If you don't have problems taking notes, and if you prefer people with an American accent, then take the TOEFL IBT. Now, what about the speaking exam? So in the IELTS speaking test, it's very spontaneous. You have a human examiner asking you questions in real time, and all you have to do is to respond to this person. You have 14 minutes maximum with the IELTS examiner, and the test is composed of three parts. You have speaking part one, speaking part two, and speaking part three. The first part of the test is introduction and interview. All the questions are basically about you. And during this part of the exam, the examiner is trying to assess your ability to discuss familiar topics. What about speaking part two? In speaking part two, you will be given a topic that you have to discuss for two minutes. But before that, you're given one minute to prepare your talking points. This part of the speaking test is designed to assess your ability to talk for a long period without interruptions. And then in speaking part three, you will answer questions related to the topic of speaking part two, but this time you're being assessed for your, for your ability to talk about things in a more abstract manner. Your performance is assessed against four criteria. You have fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. So if you want to get a good score for fluency and coherence, you have to be able to talk for a long time without a lot of unnecessary pauses. You should be able to correctly use cohesive devices. For lexical resource, you should be able to paraphrase effectively. You should use an array of words with precision and you want to showcase the ability to use idiomatic expressions and show the examiner that you have awareness of collocations. For grammatical range and accuracy, you want to frequently produce error-free sentences using different sentence structures. And for pronunciation, you have to pronounce English sounds correctly. Now, what about the TOEFL IBT? So for the TOEFL IBT, you're not going to talk to a person. So if you're, you're easily intimidated by an examiner, if you're not comfortable speaking English in front of another person, then the TOEFL IBT speaking test is for you. In the IELTS exam, you're only graded by a human examiner. With the TOEFL IBT speaking exam, you're graded by two entities, a human rater and a speech rater. The questions will be shown on the screen. You will be given time to prepare your answers before you're instructed to speak. In the IELTS, you can talk for as long as you want, but the examiner will interrupt you if you're taking too much time. Not to punish you, but because the examiner is very mindful of how much time he or she is spending with you since there are other candidates to accommodate. In the TOEFL IBT, you're given limited time to prepare and you can only talk for a specified time frame. There are four questions. You have question number one. For question number one, you're going to answer questions using your personal knowledge and experience. Typically, you're going to be asked to pick between two sides. Do you agree or disagree? Or there are two ideas and you have to tell, you have to say which one do you prefer. So let's say a topic like, do you agree or disagree that online learning is better than traditional learning? So just pick a side and then defend your answer. For question one, you're given 15 seconds to prepare your response. And then you have to talk about your answer for 45 
minutes. For question number two, you're going to read a short passage for 45 seconds. After that, you're going to listen to a recording. And then for 30 seconds, you're going to be given a chance to prepare. And then for one, one minute, you have to speak. Your answer should summarize the contents of the passage and the recording. And you also have to establish the relationship between the two. The nature of the passage and the recording for question two is campus setting. So you're talking about a change or proposal in a university. In question number three, almost the same story. You're going to read the passage and listen to a recording. But, but the difference is the passage for question three, it's about an academic concept. And then the recording, you have a professor giving examples of that academic concept. Again, you have 30 seconds to prepare and then one, one minute to talk about the sources. You have to summarize the contents of the sources and then establish their relationship. And then by the time you get to question four, you will listen to a lecture and then you have to summarize it. You have one minute to prepare and then, uh, sorry, not one minute to prepare, 30, 30, 30 seconds to prepare and then one minute to, to talk. You will be assessed based on three things. You have delivery, topic development, and language use. Delivery is a combination of pronunciation and fluency. Are you pronouncing words correctly? Can you give wrong answers without committing a lot of unnecessary pauses? Topic development is how accurate is your answer? For question one, there are no right or wrong answers. It all comes down to your ability to defend your response. But for questions two, three, and four, there are right or wrong answers because you have references. Now, when you compare that to the IELTS, in the IELTS, there's, there's very big room for you to pick topics to discuss because there are no right or wrong answers in the IELTS since there's no references that will become a basis for your responses. Now, what about language use? In the TOEFL IBT, language use pertains to grammar and vocabulary. In the TOEFL, research states that the human rater is great at assessing a test taker's topic development and language use, whereas the speech rater, it's artificial intelligence, it's better at assessing delivery. Here at 9.09er, we have discovered a way to beat the speech rater. So we can help you get a high score with the speech rater, so all you have to worry about is the human Rater. Whereas with the IELTS, it's a little bit subjective. You're at the mercy of the examiner. If you do prepare, obviously, there's a good chance that you will get a good score. If you understand the grading criteria, then you will get the outcome that you want. But the examiner just has too much power here. And the interpretation of the examiner will pretty much impact your test scores. They can say that they all have the same understanding of the grading criteria. It's very straight forward, but of course, human nature dictates that sometimes one examiner might be seeing something else and another examiner might be seeing a different thing all together. And in that regard, I think the TOEFL IBT has a fairer scoring system. In my opinion, objectively, the IELTS has easier questions, but the TOEFL IBT, I think it's easier to meet the requirements for the score that you want, especially when you know how to beat the speech rater. But to summarize, if you're the type of person that prefers to speak spontaneously, you don't need to prepare to speak. You'd rather just answer questions right away. If you don't want to be limited by source materials, take the IELTS. And a lot of healthcare professionals watching right now, let's not forget that, that speaking is the most important aspect of the test for you. So we have to remember that we need to prepare effectively for our speaking exam and the test that we will take pretty much aligns with our strengths. If you're the type of person that wants to prepare whenever you will answer speaking questions, if you want references for your answers because you're not good at generating ideas quickly, then the TOEFL IBT is for you. Now, what about the, the writing section? So for the writing section of the, of the IELTS, you have two tasks. So writing task one, 
you're supposed to write a report composed of 150 words for 20 minutes. The report could be about statistics or processes. So when we say statistics, we're talking about line graphs, pie charts, tables, and bar graphs. Whereas processes, these are illustrations that show us how something works, how something is manufactured, or it could be the life cycle of an organism or an object because we have such things called product cycles, or it could be about a map. So for 20 minutes, you have to highlight the key features of those things, and your report should contain at least 150 words. What about writing task two? So for writing task two, you're given 40 minutes to write an essay on a given topic, and your essay should contain at least 250 words. What about TOEFL? writing. TOEFL writing is way shorter. So for the integrated task, you're given 20 minutes to write an essay about a passage in the lecture. So you will be given three minutes to read a passage and then you're going to listen to a lecture. Your job is to summarize the contents of both sources and to establish how they are connected with one another. I think the TOEFL integrated writing task is more appealing to a lot of test takers because unlike the IELTS, you don't really need to come up with a lot of ideas because basically all you have to do is just paraphrase information from the sources given. And there are people who find it difficult to deal with statistics because you have to do some calculation there. Whereas with the TOEFL IBT integrated writing task, it's just a straight up English test. Now, the second writing task in the TOEFL IBT writing section is called Writing for an Academic Discussion. In 10 minutes, you have to contribute to an online discussion, and your contribution should contain at least 100 words. You will read a professor's question posted online. You have two students who responded to this question, and your response should not only answer the professor's question, but incorporate some of the elements brought up by the two students in the online post. You might think that, oh, 10 minutes is a very short time frame for me. But with practice, you can easily produce 100 words that will satisfy the requirements of the test. So in my opinion, again, in my opinion, I think the TOEFL IBT writing exam is easier. So if, we're, if we were to summarize this head-to-head -head comparison, uh, I would say that IELTS reading is easier than TOEFL reading. Um, for IELTS listening and TOEFL listening, it's pretty much equal. Uh, me personally, I think TOEFL speaking is easier than IELTS speaking. And then I think TOEFL writing is easier than IELTS writing. Again, this, this is just my personal take on this. And it's also based on the feedback that I got from our students. But the decision is still yours. That's why I'm providing you with all this information so that you can make an informed choice. Um, oops. Um, we have we have Miss Kalil Kalimlim Mishang. How do you register? All right. So Miss Mishang, uh, I posted the the link for applying with Kinetics USA. I hope that you'll find it. I've Reposted it. I can't seem to reply to your comment. I'll give it another another try. Can't seem to be. I can't seem to reply to your comment. I'm trying though. But I hope you can find the, the link that I shared in the comments section. Okay. So again, I hope that I was able to provide you with useful information on which test to take. Now. At 9.09, er we are ready to help all of you. But of course, before you start preparing for your exam, you, you want to know what kind of scores you should be aiming for. So in the case of the TOEFL, and I'm just going to concentrate on the TOEFL because we have plenty of videos here uh, on the Kinetics Facebook page that touch on the IELTS. So if you want to become a U.S. certified nurse and you're considering the IELTS or you're considering TOEFL as your alternative to the IELTS. Keep in mind that you need a combined score of 57 in listening, reading, and writing, and you need to get 
24 over 30 in the IELTS speaking exam. This is actually good news because originally, nurses were required to get 26 over 30 in speaking. Now, for visa screen, considering this change, it means that it's easier for you to, to meet language requirements for your visa because the score requirement just got lower. Again, in the past, the score requirement was 26 over 30 for visa screen. Now it's just 24 over 30. So I think this is a, a welcome change and I think we should take advantage of it because as we know, sometimes um, immigration rules are unpredictable. <laughs> they could change at any given moment. So while the TOEFL speaking requirement isn't that high, I think do consider processing your application, preparing for your test right away so that you can make your American dream come true with the help of Connetics and 9.0 Niner. So again, for those who who don't have any contacts abroad, if you want to become a nurse in the U.S., please uh, use the link that you see on the screen or the one that I posted in the comment section so that Connetics can help you you know, become a U.S. registered nurse. By the way, uh, Connetics offers free English exams, IELTS and TOEFL, for those who will ask to be assisted by the org. All right? So for people who will register with Connetics, you will be able to enjoy free IELTS or TOEFL exam. All right? What if you're a medical technologist? Uh, for the reading, listening, and writing sections of the TOEFL, you need a combined score of 57 and a speaking score of 24 over 30, very similar to nurses. For medical technicians who want to work in the U.S., you need a combined score of 53 in reading, listening, and writing. For speaking, you need 24. For occupational therapists, so for OTs and PTs, the grading Criteria for visa screen is a little bit stricter. You need a combined score of 63 in reading, listening, and writing, and then a speaking score of 26 over 30. For physical therapists, same thing. For pharmacists, uh, you need a score of 22 in reading, 21 in listening, 26 in speaking, and 24 in writing. By the way, if you know teachers, yes, the U.S. is looking for teachers. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the country needs about 60,000 high school teachers per year. So if you know someone, if you know a teacher, an experienced teacher, a licensed teacher, tell them the U.S. wants them, all right? Target scores are 22 in reading and listening, 24 in speaking, 21 in writing. And Canada Direct Stream, uh, this is a student visa application process for selected countries, including the Philippines. If you want to use the TOEFL to meet language requirements, the minimum overall score is 83. Now, the danger of self-studying is, let's say you, you found a YouTube expert, all right? Th that's cool, that's cool. Uh, and you're using the resources from this YouTube expert to, to prepare for your test. I, I personally don't see a problem with that because we understand that review centers are not for everybody. But you also need to be aware of the danger of studying on your own. No one is giving you feedback. The YouTube expert cannot tell you what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong. You may be learning something, but nobody is telling you if you are implementing or correctly executing what you have learned. So it's best to seek the assistance of qualified professionals. At 9.09, er we have a lot of lecturers and coaches who not only took the exam, but are trained by examiners. So in my case, I took the TOEFL IBT. I got 29 in speaking, 28 in writing. I also trained with ETS. So rest assured, what I will tell you is basically very relevant and very significant to your TOEFL IBT exam. So at Niner, we have various review packages, but I want to talk about our 25-in-1 package and TOEFL Unlimited review package. So the 25-in-1 review package, it's worth 4,000 pesos. Um, it comes with our IELTS and OET review packages, and that gives you access to unlimited lectures via Zoom. You also get unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching. You also have act access to practice tests and materials, all right? Now, what about our TOEFL unlimited review package? You will have access to recorded webinars for test-taking strategies, grammar, and vocabulary. You also will be able to enjoy unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching, practice tests, and 
digital review materials, both packages are valid for life. So they will never expire. If you're not yet intent on taking your test anytime soon, if you review right now, then you'll be able to enjoy these packages for the rest of your life. Let's not forget, in a world where inflation is very common, prices can go up at any given time. So if you avail these packages right now, you at least get to avail them at a very, very low price. And you're getting quality education at the same time. So I'm just going to give you a quick preview of our unlimited review packages. Um, let's start with TOEFL. Or I think let's just focus on TOEFL. Uh -huh. So for TOEFL, There you go. So once you enroll with us, you will have access to all these goodies. All right. So for our TOEFL Unlimited Review Package, um, let's take this as an example. If you're a new student, the resume course button says start course. But if you've used the package before, it will say resume course. Just click on it. And uh, there you go. You will have all the goodies right there. Uh, we have information about the changes that were implemented to the TOEFL. All right. So it means to say that our materials, our resources are updated. We're able to keep up with changes with exams. You have recorded webinars here for reading, listening, speaking, the two writing tasks. We have practice tools, uh, which are software that are very similar to the ones used in the actual exam. And then we have grammar, vocabulary, accent classes. We have a lot of practice tests. And then you can avail one-on-one -on -one coaching where your coaches will give you feedback on your performance, give you a score, and tell you what you can do to get better. Uh, a very similar thing can be experienced with our IELTS review package. The only difference being is that we have live lectures for, for the IELTS. We also offer face-to-face -face classes at branches in... Metro Manila for TOEFL. So for TOEFL face-to-face -face lectures or coaching, contact 9.09er Quezon City. For for IELTS and IELTS coaching and IELTS lectures, they're available face-to-face -face in all our branches across the nation. So I'm sorry if I took too much of your time. I think it's already 9.01 p.m. I hope that you learned a lot from me. Um, again, coordinate with Connetics USA if you want to pursue your American dream of becoming a healthcare professional in the United States. Um, until next time, thank you very much for joining me. I hope I was able to provide you with a lot of useful information regarding the IELTS and the TOEFL. If you want to prepare, if you need help preparing for the exam, do let us know. Contact us at 9.09er and we'll be more than happy to be part of your test preparation journey. Uh, so for now, I'll be leaving. <laughs> Again, this is Coach Lone of 9.09er Quezon City. I wish you all the best in your exam. God bless all of you and have a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening. Bye-bye.